everyone! In today's video, we're going to be using a module called Google Trans, which is just the Google Translate API in Python, and we're going to make all sorts of cool things with that library. So in today's video, first of all, we're just going to explore what the Google Trans library is and all of its features. Then we'll check out all of the parts of today's program in the demo, and what we're going to do with the Google Trans library. Then we'll check out some use cases of this library and our program, and then we'll just get straight into the demo, in which the first part we're going to do text translation, which is just in a variable and then it'll print back the translated text. Then we'll do language detection, which will detect the language that our text is in. And then we're going to do text to speech translation, which is it'll translate the text and then it'll say it out loud. So first of all, what is the Google Trans Library? So the Google Trans Library is a library created by Google itself and the Google Translate team. And it's an open source library that's free and it has unlimited service for Python. And it uses a Google Translate API that we'll check out in the demo. And it also supports auto language detection, just like real Google Translate. So let's check out that auto language detection. So as you can see, I have Google Translate pulled up here. And there's a detect language feature, which will just check out, it'll detect the language. So let's say I say like, hello there, and then we want to translate it into Spanish. Then it detects that it's English. As you can see, it detects that it's English. And then if you say something in Spanish, like hola, como estas, then you can see that it detects that it's Spanish. And then if we translate it back to English, then it translates. So just like that, we're going to be using that kind of feature in our Python program also. So that's the auto language detection. And it also supports 106 different languages. And let's actually check out the languages also. So as you can see, it has from Afrikaans all the way to, let's see, what's the last one, Zulu. So as you can see, it supports so many different languages. So there's a wide variety of languages that you can use. So that's all about the Google Trans library. And by the way, the Google Trans library has all of the same features that Google Translate has, and they're adding even more. So now let's check out today's program. So part one of text translation with Python in today's demo is we're going to take variable text and you can add any text you want. And then it's going to translate that and then print it back to us. So that's pretty simple. But part two, we're going to take our same translate variable text and then we're going to do language detection on that. So let's say we have some text just like we did just now. It's going to detect the language and then print the lang like what language it is in. And then part three is again text translation, but then it'll say out loud the translated text into whatever language we're translating it to. So now let's check out the use cases. The first use case is, let's say you're traveling and you don't know how to speak a foreign language. Then you can use this, then you can use this kind of program or even you can create it into a mobile application, which many people have done. So we can use this so that we can communicate. So let's say we don't know the language, then we can just type up our text in English or whatever language that's native to you. And then it'll translate it and give it back to us. And then other people can read it and you can communicate like that. The next use case is multi-language applications. So if you're creating an application, likely you would want to make it available to people all over the world so that you can, so that you can reach a, a larger audience and more people will see your application. So you can use this Python program as your backend, and then you can make a multi-language application, meaning if you're in a different country that speaks a different language, then it can just translate it. And finally, this will make translation jobs. So there's lots of jobs in which you have to translate certain text into another language. So this will make those translation jobs much easier and it can help them out. So now that you know about Google Trans library, so let's actually get into the demo so that we can work with it. All right, so let's get straight into the demo. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my Atom so that I can actually edit my program. So the first part of the program is just the imports. So I'm going to be adding more libraries later on for the different parts, but for now we're just going to import Google Trans so that we can import the library. And also we're going to say from Google Trans, 
import star, and that star just means import everything from Google Trends. So that's all for the imports. Next is setup. So for the setup, we only have one variable that we need to create. And this variable we're going to use for every single other part. So this variable, let's call it translator, and then we're going to initialize the variable from our module. So, oh, that's not what it is, okay. Let's take this out and then say setup. And then let's call the variable translator, like I said. And then we're going to say Google Trends, which is our library, dot, and then we're using a function from that called translator. And then we're going to use this translator dot, and then we can use any function from Google Trends after this. So that's all for the setup. Next is part one. And part one it just consists of taking variable like random text that we have, and then we're just gonna translate it and then print it back to us. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to say translator dot translate because that's the function to, to actually translate stuff. And then we can translate any text. Let's say like, hello there, how are you? And you can also put this into a variable, like you can say text equals and then hi, and then you can add the variable there. But I'm just going to add the text into a string there. So hello there, how are you? And then the last parameter is just the destination. And that's just the destination language that we want to translate into. So right now we're translating from English, and then we have to say dest equals, and then whatever language you want. And then we can refer back to all of our languages in Google Translate supports. And then as you can see, it has a code. Each language has a code. So let's say I were to do like Korean, then the code would be KO. But you can also just write Korean as a string. So you can either write KO or you can say Korean like that. And then now that's gonna translate it, but we want to print it back to us. So in order to print it, we have to have a variable here. So let's say translate equals, but you can call these variables whatever you want. And then again, we're just gonna print translate, which is our variable that we created here. But we want to extract the text from that, so we're going to say translate.text. And then if we run this, what it should do is it should say, hello there, how are you, but in Korean. So let's test it out. So I'm going to go to terminal here, and before we run the code, we want to install our module. And for now, there's only one module to install, which is obviously Google Trends. So we have Google Trends here. Oh, let's open that back up, okay. So it's saying re requirement already satisfied, so let's clear that, and then we want to run our code. So Python 3, and then whatever the file name is. In this case, it's called translate.py. So translate.py, and then it should print something in Korean. There we go. So as you can see, it printed in Korean text, hello there, how are you? Now, I don't know Korean, so I don't know if that's correct, but it probably is since it translated it. And you can do this for any language. Like, for example, let's do it in Spanish. So now I know that, so it should say, hola, como estas? Yeah, there we go. So it printed in Spanish now. And you can do this for any language. Like, for example, let's do it in Hindi. Then there we go, that worked also. So as you can see, we can translate some string text into a different language and then it'll print it back to us. The next step is to, just like we did in Google Translate, it should detect the language. So to detect the language, let's just take this part out for now. And then let's do part two, part two. And if I'm looking up, that's because I have a monitor. That's where I'm recording. All right, so for part two, what we're going to do is we're using a different variable now. So we can just comment this part out. And I'm going to make a variable called maybe like language detection. And then for the function, we're just going to say translator, no Google Trans. And then that's the function. So now for part two, we're going to use this language detection variable. So I'm going to say language detection dot detect because that's the function. And then you can detect any text. So let's detect some of the text with different characters. Like for example, this Korean text that says, hello there, how are you? And you can create, you, can, you don't have to copy paste it from terminal. That's just because I don't know Korean. So let's detect this, this text and it should say Korean now. 
but we want to print that so we have to add a print function to that so let me do this then print all right there we go so now if we run this now it should say korean or the ko which is just the code for korean so let's go back here and python3 translate.py and there we go so it said detected language is ko which is the korean code and then it says confidence one it gives you a confidence just like a ai system so the confidence is one which means it's very confident in its decision so we can also do it in english so let's say like this is awesome then it should say english en which is english and you can check the codes with the google translate.com this thing so as you can see, English is EN right here. So there we go, that worked. And you, again, you can do this for any, sing, any language. I'm just testing with these certain languages. So that was part two where it detected the language. Part three, we're going to use this translator variable again. So I'm going to uncomment that. So let's paste in. So let's copy the comments just that it's neat. And then instead of part two, it's part three this time. So I'm going to use a library called PyTTSX3, which I used in my previous video to do a text-to-speech application. So now what we're going to do is going to translate the text, and then PyTTSX3, which is the text-to-speech module, it's going to say it out loud, the translated text. So in the imports, I'm going to add import PyTTSX3. And if you want to check out that video, if you want an in-depth explanation of PyTTSX3, it'll be in the description. So now we're creating a variable called speaker, which is just going to initialize the actual voice for PyTTSX3. Oh, I spelled import wrong. Import. There we go. So speaker equals, and then we're going to use PyTTSX3 dot init. And then we're going to use the initialize function. Then again, we're going to, let me just copy this. We're going to copy the same translate function we're gonna copy the same translate variable and we're going to translate a certain text. And then let's add our own text. So like maybe, please like and subscribe. And then let's change the destination to maybe like, how about German? Then we want it to say it out loud. So, but before that, let's just try printing it. So print translate.text. And let's save it and then go back to terminal. Now it should say something like, okay, here. So that's saying, please like and subscribe in German. So now we want to say it out loud. So how we can do that is by using our speaker variable that we initialized. So I'm going to say speaker.say and then our translate variable dot text, just like printing it, except we're going to say it out loud this time. And then after that, we want to run that. So we're saying speaker.run and wait. And then that's a function, so we need parentheses. And then, yeah, now what it's going to do, now what it's going to do is we initialized our speaker variable, then we're translating it and then printing it in German, just like before. But now we're saying it out loud. So we're going to say whatever please like and subscribe is in German out loud using our PyTTSX3 library, and then we're going to run that. All right, so I'm going to go to terminal so that we can run our code. Let's clear that, and then let's do python3 translate.py. So what it should do now is it should say something out loud in German. I don't know German, but it should say something. Oh, name spec, oh, I think I misspelled something. Let's see this. Speaker, oh yeah, I spelled that wrong, okay. Save that and then run it again. Bit like and run up near and. There we go. So it said that in German and then obviously it printed it out also. So that worked. And we can do it in Spanish also. Spanish. Por favor, me gusta y subscribed. See, there we go. That worked. And this kind of thing, it only works with. English characters, like for example, Spanish and German, they all have English characters. They have some special characters, but mostly it's just English characters. Like it won't work if you do it with Korean or something because it has different characters and different letter letters and symbols. But yeah, so there we go, that worked. And for the last part, this is very simple, but what we could do is 
we can also take the user's input. So let's say part four here. And what we'll do is we'll make like variables called input text equals, and then we'll get the user's input with the input variable. And what that does is this input variable in terminal, whenever we run the code, then it'll ask us to type something and then it'll use that variable as whatever we typed. So we can ask for some text like, please type your text here. And then we'll add some space for them to write it. And then same thing for input language. And then we'll say like input function. And then here we'll say, please type your language here. And then there we go. So now the user's input, like whatever they type, that'll be stored in the input text and input language variable. So we can use that same thing. So we can make a variable called translate. And then let's just comment this out so that it doesn't keep saying stuff. Okay, so we can make a variable called translate and then we'll say translator.translate. And then as the parameters, we'll add our input text and input language variables. So for the text, we'll say input text. And then for the language, we'll say dest equals and then input language. And then that'll work for whatever language and whatever text you add. And then obviously we want to print that. So we'll say print translate dot text and then save it and then we can run it. So now what it should do is it should ask us for the user's input on what language we want and what text we want. And then it'll translate from English to whatever language we type. So let's just run that. And it says, please type your text here. So maybe like, this is a great day. And then please type your language. Let's do it in, how about we do it in Hindi? Then it should translate. Oh, I think I spelled something wrong. Okay, my bad. Translate. All right, there we go. And let's clear that and then run it again. So please type your text. This is a great day. And then we'll do it in Hindi. Now, there we go. It works here. And it thinks speaker is not defined. Oh, okay, sorry. At the bottom, I added something here. Okay, let's just take that out and then run it again. But as you can see, it did work. So, and then we can change the language also and the text. So let's just test that out. So please type your text here, maybe like, my name is Rishabh. And then the language we can do, how about we do it in French? Now there we go, it says something in French. It says, my name is Rishabh in French. And there we go, that worked. So we've successfully created a translation app in Python. So first of all, we just took variable text and then we translated that into a certain language. And then we detected what language a certain text was. And then we detected what language some text was. And then we said it out loud using the PyTTSX3 library. And finally, we took the user input and then we just translated it like that. And the opportunities are endless with this library because it uses Google Translate's API. So it has all of the functions and all of the things that Google Translate can do. So in this video, we just did the basics of the Google Trends library, just showing you the main functions and features of the Google Trends library using the Google Translate API. But the possibilities are endless with this kind of application. You can even create mobile apps that do translation like this. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any Google Translate questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.